Go ahead. Good afternoon. My name is Jonathan Gale, and this is the December 2nd, Thursday, 4.33 now time meeting, calling this meeting to order for the Dighton Commission on Disability. Before we do anything else, I'm going to ask that everybody please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and then have a moment of silence for residents in Canton far and wide who have passed away or are ill for any reason. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone, appreciate it. So the next thing that we're going to do is uh, we always identify the members of the COD who are present. So if we could do that first, I'll start with myself. My name is Jonathan Gale and I am the uh, Kitan Dighton, the coordinator for the Dighton Commission on Disability and the chair of the commission. And then we have Kevin. Kevin Smith, member. And Ken. You're mute, Ken. So you didn't hear that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, Ken Pacheco, I'm the liaison for the uh, Dighton Board of Selectmen. I am a non-voting member. Nicole? Nicole Mello, member. Thank you all very much. Those are the participants who are, who are members. Do we have anyone in the public other than Theo right now? Kevin? No, I don't. Nope, we do not. Okay. Um, the next thing we would normally have on the, on the agenda are committee reports, but we have Theo with us, and I'd like Theo to be able, if it's okay, if I can get a motion to change things out of order so that Theo can make his presentation to us. So I just need a motion for that to take the next item out of Jonathan. order on the agenda. We're not out of order. Committee reports is the community garden. Doesn't this, doesn't this fall into it? Well, yes and no. I mean, I can put it under the same. Yeah. Yeah, it's can. the same. We don't need to okay. go through that. Just okay. We're good. Then, that, then that's fine. Then I'm going to open up the floor to Theo Conti. And Theo, um, you have the floor in a moment. Uh, this is what Theo has chosen to do for his Eagle Scout project. So I'm going to ask Theo to explain it to us. This does need to be completed formally, which I found out last night by his 18th birthday. So hopefully we don't have too many big snowstorms during the winter. Um, mm -hmm. Otherwise we'll, we'll all have to get out there and help, which I'm happy to do. So Theo, if you could open up your mic um, and explain the project to us. And if you need Kevin to put up anything, just let him know what you'd like him to put up. Okay. Um, so uh, thank, me, thank you for having me. Um, uh, for my Eagle Scout project, I am creating two ADA compliant uh, raised garden beds for the community garden um, that is um, in town. Um, I have the dimensions um, I ran with uh, Mr. Gale and they're all ADA required dimensions. Um, they will be the same materials as the garden beds that are already there. Um, and uh, there'll be rough cut pine uh, garden uh, boards. And um, I guess I'll just talk about the um, dimensions. So the dimensions will be 30 inches high um, with an eight inch leg for wheelchairs to go under. Um, and and so the legs will have uh, be a workspace for um, people to work on. Um, do you have any questions? Uh, yeah, do you have any questions for just the leader? Theo, what are the other dimensions going to be? I know 30 inches high with a well, ledge of an eight inch lip. What are the other dimensions? So the other dimensions will be um, eight inch. It, it'll be an eight inch by, uh, no, sorry. An eight foot by four foot um, box. 4.38 PM, four notifications. Um, and there, there will be support boards as we see in the photo. Um, um, in the 
on two of the side boards. So if you want to pull up um, the other design photo, I can explain the side, side view. Bear with me because I got up oh, there it is. Uh, so the sides will be made out of um, three boards, two 12 inches and one six inch with, and then the um, legs will be a two inch thick. So it'll be 32 inches total, but 30 inches from ground to under the legs. Um, the support boards will be um, the bottom, the bottom 12 inch and the, the two 12 inch uh, boards and there'll be two support boards in each of them. Um, that run from each eight foot side to- Yeah, from- To keep the uh, boards from bowing out with mm -hmm. the weight of the soil. Mm -hmm. um, and then you're gonna have an inner lining as well, is that right, because of the height? Yes, yeah. yeah, so the, there'll be an inner lining um, so the soil won't seep out through the seams of the boards since there's many boards stacked up on top of each other. Um, um, the price, I don't know, do you have any questions or? My, uh, my, my question is also, between the boards. So when you go 12 inches and then 12 inches. So, and then at the top of the six inches before you have the overlay shelf, the shelving or the, or the flat surface. Are you going to put any, I didn't think of this before. I actually just thought of it now. Um, mm -hmm. But have you thought of putting, is there any kind of a cement or rubber cement or anything that can be rushed along the, those, those two inch lips at, between the boards? so that when you place the boards on each other, it kind of seals between them to give it extra potential, you know, s s to stop any other potential seepage. I don't know um, if there's, I know there are things like that, but I don't know if you have anything like that. Mm -hmm. So as of right now, we haven't thought or planned on anything like that. Um, we do, we do want to keep it, the boards all natural and um, untreated and we have a specific um, treatment for the boards. Um, so they'll be protected. Okay. All right. But so yeah, as of right now. I think the landscape fabric inside will keep the dirt in, from escaping. Mm -hmm. That's what I was just going to ask because you had mentioned the lining. I was going to ask what that lining was because that makes sense. That will, that should prevent. Mm -hmm. I was, I didn't know if that prevents water seepage too. That's what I, I was, I wasn't sure of. Um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> And then you said you're going. Are you also going to be having some brackets for the underside? Yes, we'll have about five brackets um, for the eight feet sides, and about like two brackets. There'll be like L brackets um, that connect the legs with the side boards. Okay. All right. Does anybody have any questions so far? Anyone else? No, the packet that we got was very informative. <laughs> Thank you. And let me ask you then, I know last night after the meeting, there was a question as to whether or not Mr. Ferry may have lumber available. Have you had a chance mm -hmm. to reach out? So I did reach out yesterday. Um, he hasn't gone back yet. Um, yeah, but I'm waiting to hear from him. Okay. And... Um, your, let's go over your cost estimates then. Yes. Um, so for your committee, I'm um, asking for a, um, what would you? Uh, what you're requesting, whether I'm requesting, requesting uh, or proposing that. Proposing, <laughs> um, sorry, <laughs> I, I don't. This is a new uh, thing for him to discuss. So it's yeah. a little bit. Um... Yeah. It's okay. Go for it. Whatever um, way it comes out, just give it a shot. So, so yeah, um, I'm requesting for funding from the, um, for, from your committee. Um, my cost estimates for the materials and will be um, 
like $350. So I'm requesting um, funding to not exceed $400 from, um, for a fund. I have one quick question for you. I did uh, see that you had your estimates, which I'll pull up so that we're all looking at them. Mm -hmm. um, that you got your pricing from um, Brightman Lumber, correct? Yes. And do you plan on sourcing all your material from Bright Brightman Lumber? Yes. Okay. Because that does help. I, I do, all, I all do the, sorry, like and appreciate the, that you're using like a local lumber yard and not running to Home Depot. So yeah, all the lumber will be from Brightman Lumber. Very good. I believe all the lumber for the existing boxes came from there as well. So mm -hmm. that's why we we wanted to get the exact same lumber. So yeah, they did come from Brightman Street, uh, Brightman Lumber. And it really is the cheapest. Even when the prices for Lumber went sky high over the summer, they kept their prices the same. They went up a little bit, but not much. So I've gotten my Lumber from them versus uh, Lowe's. Mm -hmm. so. I, think, I think a caveat to this would be that what was mentioned last night, Ken, after the Board of Selectmen's meeting, because um, they weren't fully aware, is that Mr. Ferry mentioned something at the meeting, actually, about potentially having some available Lumber still in the in the shed. Mm -hmm. So if that's the case, and that's why I asked if they had heard back from Mr. Ferry yet, and if it's the same lumber, but left over, then that could potentially lower the cost mm -hmm. if there's available lumber there. If mm -hmm. anything, it's certainly not gonna increase it, but it could potentially right. lower the cost. So we would in the end need to know if that's the case so that we can we can work with the actual figure, you know, as opposed to whatever we might consider approving this for. So just keep that, keep that in your head, you know, because um, if he does have some of the lumber, you'll need to determine how much of it he has and then the difference in how much you need to get so that we're aware. Mm -hmm. Does anybody else have any questions so far? This is no, uh, Rachel, Theo's mom. And I just had a question about um, if you did choose to fund this is, is that he's got a fundraising form that he potentially has to fill out, um, but only if the funds come from different entities other than the beneficiary. So as the town is the beneficiary, if you, if you funded this, would, would that essentially be town money? And so he would not need to figure out, I mean, um, apply for, and um, fill out his different proposal forms for fundraising. Well, I think before we answer that, and I would might probably Ken can answer that better than any of us, but let me ask you, first of all, is he allowed to have town money as part of the contributing source? The money um, can come from the project beneficiary. Mm -hmm. It can come from family, friends, or it can come from fundraising. So if it, if it doesn't fall under family, friends, or beneficiary, then he has to uh, do some fundraising for it and that requires separate forms. Okay, so just to make sure that I'm clear, Rachel and Theo, the beneficiary, the owner of the property is the town. The beneficiaries are going to be residents or venues of the town. So that would tell me that from what you're saying, this form would not have to be filled out, but I'm assuming you would want something showing where the dollars are coming from. He will need to document where where yeah. all the money comes from. Okay. Ken, do you have an answer to the question any well, further? Yeah, I'm not familiar with the form that he would have to fill out, but the town is the beneficiary. And if we're providing the funds for it, uh, it doesn't sound like it needs to fill out that form. Okay. So I know we have limited operating budgets for things like this, but we do, we haven't had any expenses yet this year for anything like this. So because we have a limited expense for something like this, we could fund it if we so chose. So I would like to hear from the members of the commission on, on your thoughts and then I'll share mine. One thing I just wanna make clear uh, just as far, so you know how the spending process works for town too is like, so typically the town doesn't, and this just makes it a little bit more, not difficult, it just makes it a process. So anytime that we want to spend money as a, any type of committee commission board, um, 
the town won't pay for anything until the goods are received. So what happens is you have to buy all this stuff from Brightman, submit the invoice to the town accountant, like, or obviously we'll submit it if we, if we approve it. Um, and then it gets paid, you know, usually it takes a week or two, depending on town warrants and stuff. So I would just want you to make sure that you check in with Brightman Lumber and that they're okay with that also too, to release the goods before, you know, payment is, um, is given because you know, I think the only other way that we could do it, and I'm not sure if we can do it this way, because I know the accountant doesn't like to do it, is a reimbursement where like you would actually pay for it and then the committee would reimburse you or you know, that, would be a reimbursement. So there's a couple of different ways to do it, but it's like kind of a conversation to have with the accountant, town accountant. And that and that can be done. So what to, to echo what Kevin is saying, if it turns out that Brightman will accept an invoice, mm -hmm. if we approved it, you would let me know. And I will call Brightman and give them the specific information that they need to send a, an invoice over to, to me. And then I would forward that to the town accountant so that it can be taken care of. And that's once delivery is made. The other choice, as Kevin said, is to put it on your own card and then give me a receipt. Um, that takes a little longer because the reimbursement then has to go back to you guys. Um, it has been done. I've had to do it recently in a situation for something else as well related to the, the commission's needs. So having said that, um, you know, even if we, if we do approve it, you just wanna make sure it's okay. It probably is. They're a local company. I think they've done business with the town before. Um, I'm quite sure that they have, I don't wanna say for sure. Um, so it's, it's a process that's fairly easy to go through once from our end, we can handle that logistical side of it as long as they can deliver to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, Kevin or, Kevin or Nicole, do you have any questions or Ken? Uh, I think he's going to have to pick it up because I, uh, do you have the ability to have it to pick it up because they're not going to deliver without a charge? I got a pickup truck so I can, I can help uh, pick it up. Uh, Same also, here. They, I'd be happy to help you. Also, if there is, if they won't accept the waiting for the bill, I'm, I'd be willing to go over there and, and talk to them. And I think I can uh, convince them to hold off on, uh, you know, to deliver the goods and then wait for the payment from the town. I've done business with them often. Uh, so I think that they'd be receptive to it if, you, if you're having a problem mm -hmm. with them holding off. But I, I can help you uh, get the wood whenever it's ready. Mm -hmm. It's my understanding that now you have to order it before you could walk in and they'd have the boards, but so many people are using them now. You have to kind of place an order and they'll let you know when it's ready. Mm -hmm. um, Tom Ferry, when I met with him, he did say that um, he would be able to transport um, the wood to the gar town garage and or yeah or the, or the garden or the garden. Um, and he said that um, I should let him know and work on the timing. Work on the timing with him. Yeah, they uh, in the past he's for the other these eight other beds that are there now. Mm -hmm. uh, he's he's picked them up and then he eventually dropped them off at the garden. We have a shed there now. I'm not sure if there's a door, but we have a shed there and it's possibly the the boards could be put in the shed. Yeah, when you're ready to do the work, uh, you're ready. Also, Theo, um, as I mentioned before, Kevin and I were going to get down there. We just have to find the time to do it with each other. But obviously. Mm -hmm. um, may not work for the next couple of days yet still, and you're not doing this for a bit of time, but to uh, get down there before there's any snowfall or anything and just measure it out and make sure exactly where the beds can go and then flag it out for you. Mm -hmm. um, we could actually meet you down there potentially if you wanted as well to meet you and your mom or whomever down there. Yeah. So that, that way, if a flag came out or there's any problem, you have a rough idea where it's going to be yourself. Mm -hmm. So that would make sense too. Um, before we have any other conversation, does anybody have any other thoughts or does anybody want to make a motion? No thoughts? I, I can't make a motion, nope. but uh, nope. I, would, I would support the, uh, okay. the commission. Uh, and this, this would be not to exceed, so not to exceed yeah. 400. So I don't know if Kevin or Nicole want to make a motion or can't, or if you guys can hear us. Yeah. I'll, I'll make a motion that we approve funding um, for the Eagle Scout project of to con for the materials to construct ADA compliant beds not to exceed four hundred dollars. 
Do I have a second? I second that, Nicole Mello. Okay, thank you both. Any discussion? I will just say in terms of discussion, I think it's important not only for what you're doing, Theo, so thank you very, very much for uh, stepping up and offering to do this as your Eagle Scout project. Um, I think it's a project that's gonna last for a long, long, long time. And a lot of residents will really be able to participate in the garden that otherwise would not have been able to participate in planting and harvesting and nurturing everything um, and enjoying it as well, even just for viewing. Um, but also I think it's important for the COD to actually be contributing to the project um, in any way that we can, rather than just our voices. And I think by putting some of our dollars behind it, um, we're letting the community know how important we feel it is to, to have accessible sur surfaces and resources in the town. So um, I thank you all for, for making the offer and also for uh, the motion that's been made so far. So hearing the motion, calling the motion now, the motion was to have the community garden project for the accessible beds funded up to not to exceed $400. It's been, um, the motion's been made and seconded. It's time for a vote. Kevin. Aye. Nicole. Aye. Ken, I know you can't vote, but I know you support. So thank you very much. Jonathan, aye, the ayes have it all the way around. Theo, you're good. Thank you. Um, thank you guys very, very much. Thank you for thinking of us, Theo, and yeah. thinking of um, these important people in our community so that they can participate in this. Mm -hmm. Good luck. Theo. So, so I, I, will, I, will, I will be in touch with uh, you, Theo, and then the first of the week, because I will be away <laughs> for the weekend so that we can just coordinate and find out if um, either we need to call them to see if they'll accept any voice or if we need to ask Ken to stop by or anything like that. So we can talk about that in the next couple of days. Or if you wanna reach out to the lumber yard, I know you had talked about placing the order. If you wanna check and find out yourself if they'll accept an invoice. Um, and if they say yes, just let them know that I'll be contacting them and you can let me know. Okay. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Rick. Have a great afternoon. Yep, you, you too. Appreciate it. So. Jonathan. Yes. Please. One second before before we move on from this, um, I just want to make it be known that, and I think it's great that we could help him, and he took the initiative to put this project together and, and get this done for us. But I just want it to be said and known that when the garden project was proposed to us, that the folks who proposed it to us originally. Um, had said that they wanted it to be ADA compliant. They were gonna build eight beds, two of which would be ADA compliant. Um, they went ahead and built eight beds that were all on the ground. Um, it doesn't sound like the initial group made the effort to make ADA compliant beds. They've kind of outsourced it, I think based on probably your visits and, and asking that they be done. So we, they had to be pushed a little bit. Um, in essence, we have supported that project in the fact that we considered the, you know, probably somewhere in the neighborhood of a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars worth of rubber mats in the grant that we wrote for MOD. Um, so it's not that we haven't supported the project. I think to an extent, uh, I'm happy to, to help Theo get his project done, but I think we also have to hold people accountable when they propose projects to us a certain way and then go off track. Um, I absolutely agree with you. Um, and I have made that known. Okay, that's that's all I, I have to say about that. I just, you know, it was proposed to us one way from the very beginning, mm -hmm. reaching that, yes, we wanna make it as accessible as possible. And then like you said, there was that Saturday where they had the community day um, and everybody went down there and built eight beds and we were all, you know, whatever, 12 inches high, so. Yep, no, I'm very aware of that. And as you know, and um, I've done my best to make it known mm -hmm. uh, to the parties that, this is, um, people need to be more, there needs to be more communication and uh, we need to be informed and we need to be consulted. Well, not just like that. This. I, just, I don't even think, cause they did, I mean, they did but, consult with us. They consulted with us through and through in the, in the Well, they need, process. but they also need to follow the protocol that was yeah, agreed to. I'm mean, gonna just put it plain and simple, like put your money where your mouth is. If you wanna, yep. if you say you're gonna do something, just please do it. Um, we're not trying to stop anybody from doing anything or make anybody's life more difficult. We're just trying to make, things more accessible, so. Can I just say one thing in regards to Kevin's comment? Um, I understand where you're coming from, Kevin, and I think it's a good point. 
Um, but also I know that the individuals that started this, um, they, they were very, um, they were very new to the green to this whole process. Um, and I think maybe some of that had played in it to it too. Um, so I, I want to give them the benefit of the doubt that they did want to do, um, good by us, but it might have become more than they anticipated. I know you people think it's easy to bring these things up, but actually doing them is a lot harder. And I think that um, that played into it. Right, and I can agree with that. And, it, and my intention is not to necessarily, you know, talk bad about what they're doing or how they went about it. I just think it needed to be said so that moving forward, like we set that precedent that if any committee or commission comes up to us with a plan and we support that plan, then like, please follow through with it. Like we, I just don't, Yeah. just moving forward. I, I think we just need to have that precedent that people follow through with what they're, they're saying. It's not and, like anything again, because I can appreciate that too, that it, yeah, mm -hmm. like you're in the middle of a project. I know they got a shed, they got fences. They worried about a bunch of things and it, you know, it's just an oversight and that, that is fine. I just think we need to at some point hold people a little bit accountable moving forward. That's all. And I think that what you're saying, what you're both saying is actually really fair. Um, points well taken on my part as well. I know, and echoing Nicole a little bit too, when they first started the project and uh, myself and Ken and Nicole sat with them and had a conversation in what was very early June actually, um, and even mentioned that there was money available for the Agricultural Commission to purchase some product originally, and they had zero to work with. And nobody had made them aware um, in the different people they were speaking to up to that point. So they jumped through hoops and did whatever they needed to do correctly and responsibly to get that $2,000 allocation for material within the time frame of the end of the year. Literally, I think within 30 days, they had to put it all together and get it done. And they did it. And if it hadn't been for us making them aware of that, I don't even know if that, that certainly probably may not, I won't say won't have, but may not have even happened to gotten off the ground the way it did. Um, so they are agreeing to it. And you know, um, it's a learning process. Some of this, the way the town works is a learning process for me too. So um, yeah, I think I there's a little bit- I don't want to discourage anyone else getting involved because we so badly need people to be involved. Um, yes, we do. So I totally get what you're saying, Kevin, because it is important that if you bring these things to us and we start getting involved, that we we would hope to see it, um, our, our work that we put into it actually occur. Um, because it is taking up our time. Well, not just that. It's just, it's like, it's unfair to, it, 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 the thing that bothers me about the situation is to me, it's like the thing that they chose to exclude, like not to ex kind of exclude as the process thing was ADA compliance, mm -hmm. you know, which um, obviously is important to all of us, you know, so it's like, we want to make sure they follow through on it. It's like, you know, it's like, it's not like, oh, we put up a, four foot fence instead of a six foot fence. It's like the biggest feature that was gonna make it accessible to people is the thing that got left out. So that bothers me a little bit. Um, but like you said, I mean, you know, you gotta give people the benefit of the doubt it is they are new to it and, and then that's fine. It's just, I just kind of needed to say it. If, if I can come to their defense a little bit, I think, I think Nicole addressed part of it that the two members that uh, organized this whole thing are new to this and they they didn't know I mean they had to go to the agricultural commission to get the monies and they weren't meeting it was a it was a whole uh, cluster I don't know how much wood they ordered but when I I was there at, at that community day Saturday I helped them uh, make the the eight raised beds I've got them in my garden over here I use Brighton Street Lum I used uh, I used the same wood uh, I don't know how much wood they they order but the wood for these two raised beds is enough wood for five regular beds. So I don't know how they got to the $2,000, spending the $2,000 already. I mean, they, they purchased the boards. They had to have somebody cut them. I don't think that cost them anything. They had to buy some preservative to put on it. I bought it for my uh, boards over here. It's not that expensive. Maybe at the total, it might've been $40 for all the preservative, the liquid uh, preservative. They had to buy the screws, but they had a lot of volunteers. You know. Kids don't know, know that we, we have to do two ADA uh, compliant beds, but there were a lot of volunteers there. I did ask them about the ADA. We talked about where they would go. I think they're gonna go near the, kind of near the shed, depending upon where, how the ramp is laid out. We did talk about that. I did not ask the, the real good question, which would have been, do you have the, the wood for the, uh, the uh, ADA uh, bed? So they may have it. I'm not sure if that's what Tom Ferry was alluding to. 
I don't think they have the wood, uh, but that's obviously the first thing we got to check to make sure you know if they have the wood. If I see Tom Ferry Monday, uh, when I go to the office, I'll I'll ask him about that. Uh, maybe I'll even shoot him a, a text, see if he has wood. Uh, but it's going to be a certain type of wood. It can't be just any wood. So I know they've saved some wood from when they knocked down the James Briggs house, but I wouldn't want to use the that wood, even though it probably lasts long. Some of it's probably chestnut. I wouldn't want to use it for raised beds. Uh, so in the uh, defense, the, the two people that are involved, and without getting into it, I think there's some personal stuff going on in one of the person's lives. So it's, as you know, Kevin, uh, mm -hmm. it takes a lot of time to be on these committees and uh, people don't get paid for it. They, they volunteer, they want to do something for their community. People and then I'm, get up frustrated because then things aren't working as fast as they would like it to work. But uh, they, they are good people. And I, I think they might've been just a miscommunication because they've always understood that it had to be a couple of beds ADA compliant. I'm not sure. I don't remember how many beds they said they were originally going to make. I thought it was going to be the eight regular beds and two ADA, and then they're going to have two big beds out front that aren't going to be raised beds. Uh, so I'm not sure uh, what the original plan was, whether they said eight regular beds and then two ADA. Uh, I thought it was six and eight. I thought it was eight total, six and two, but I mean, that, that's- You could be right. I, I don't, honestly, I don't remember. They have plenty of room there. Yeah, so, I think, and I think what's going to be important is as well, at least to where we're at now, because we can't go back, um, is looking at where these beds are going to be placed so that we can maximize the ability for people who need the surfaces and need the, the, the shelving on the top and the flat surface area, whether they use a wheelchair or a walker or not, to be able to access it safely. And, you know, with the the shortest amount of distance from the parking area, as well as the shortest amount of distance once they're inside the gate to be able to access and utilize, you know, the, the services of the garden and to participate in where the beds are and doing everything that's involved. So, you know, that's where we're at now. And, you know, that's, that's what we have to focus on. I, I got the impression when I, when I spoke to Jen and Tanya that same day, Ken, that in terms of materials and wood, uh, this was part of the project that the Eagle Scout was supposed to put together and do. They didn't mention anything to me at the, on that date or any other time about having other stuff available. Um, I would suggest, but I don't know, that maybe that $2,000 figure also went to pay. I don't know if it went to pay for any of the fencing. I don't know if it went to pay for any of the, that's, that's there. Um, I don't know if it went to pay for any other materials that are going to go inside that come in, you know, big bundles or anything like that. So that much I don't know, but I'm, it's right. possible it went to pay for some of the fencing and stuff too. And I know they're gonna have some compost and some other materials um, brought there. So that may be costing uh, them some money, but they didn't have to pay for the fence. And I believe uh, Tom Ferry had that fencing available. Oh wow! They, they didn't have to pay for the shed, uh, but I believe the town is paying for the shed. I think it's about $5,000. BP is, is building, Donating, right. uh, doing the labor for the, uh, for the shed. Um, and we've made the eight beds, but they, they're not filled in. So I think it's important that uh, Kevin and, and Jonathan meet with Tanya and uh, Jenna to figure out where these beds are going to go. Do that before we obviously we fill them up. The ones that we made, we can just lift them and move them. So they're not fixed for that area, even though they put some cardboard down to keep the weeds down. Uh, there is a gate at the front. I don't believe there's going to be a gate at the side. So the person is going to have to have, uh, if they're in a wheelchair, some area to get to the gate. And then you want the, these beds kind of close to uh, that area because I don't know how far the 1500 of that rubber material you know, is going to cover in the, uh, the garden because the whole thing is not going to have that. Am I correct? No, you are correct. And, so, and that's why I said we need to, to maximize where they're, where they're going to be. Kevin, I know you and I were going to, going to look at that. Um, I can certainly, as Ken said, reach out and invite Nicole, uh, not Nicole. Well, Nicole, you too, because Nicole you're part of the subcommittee. Well, you're part of the subcommittee for this. So Yes, I would like you to be involved in that if you'd like to be. Yes, um, let me know. Okay, um, so I will coordinate for myself, for Kevin and Nicole, and I'm gonna reach out to Jen and Tanya also and see if we can all find a time to meet down there. Um, I'll reach out to, I know Kevin's rough schedule, Nicole, I'll reach out to yours to see what your rough availability is in the next week or 10 days as well. Um, so I can coordinate our schedules with at least one of their schedules, if that makes sense. Yes. Okay. Very good. Do we have any more discussion on this or should I move on? I know we all have some things that we need to be doing. So I'm thinking 
being conscious of time. Uh, Rachel and Theo are still here. Can I just say one thing? Sure, absolutely. Um, I I don't know if we were supposed to still be listening to this. Oh, no, this is a this oh, no. Rachel. A this meeting. is a public. This is a public meeting. It's recorded. Okay. Anything I, that we say, we're aware anybody could be listening. We're, okay. We're so I appreciate your viewpoint, um, and we were not um, part of the discussions or any inf privy, to, privy to any information that happened in June. You know, the start of this project. But just um, hearing your concerns, I wonder. Um, if I could ease the frustration a little in that Jenna and Tanya are both affiliated with scouts and they, they are the ones through scouts that reached out to Teddy to ask that this be done. So they knew that this had to happen, whether or not they should have done it earlier when all the boxes were built, that might be true. Um, but perhaps this was their way of, you know, um, making it happen and they always knew maybe it was a little much that they could do um but i'm not sure that that's just i just wanted to let you know that they are scouting and they reached out to him to do this for for you guys so um and i think i i i, I, I will say i think we 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 are all aware that they're um you know scouting parents um and appreciate the fact that they are they did make that very clear when the proposals were made, not only to COD originally, but also to the to the Board of Selectmen for their approval to even use the space, that it was a scouting project. So yes, that was understood from the get go. And you know, even when when the, the day when we were all there and these were put together, they did make it clear that they were going to reach out to uh, Eagle Scouts to see who might be interested in doing this, and that they were going to bring it to the next meeting on a Tuesday night, I believe, to see who they thought might be interested. And they had a couple of individuals in mind. Uh, Theo being one of them that, who they thought might be interested in the project. So I think it's just, again, that, you know, they're, they're agreeing to the process. They're learning the process as they go. And, you know, to some extent, um, we, especially me being new in this town is as well on how things go in the town. So I think we're honestly all on the same page. It's just a matter of more logistics than anything. Right. That's great. Well, thank you for letting me put my uh, two cents in there, but. Um, it's okay, that was three cents, but we'll. We'll, <laughs> well, Ted and I will head out now, but. Oh, and you, don't, you, you don't have to, you can stay on if you'd like. No, it. that's really. okay. And I did, Tanya did tell us that there wasn't any wood left. So, I mean, maybe there was a little bit that Tom's referencing, but, um, and she also did say the prices were a lot higher this summer than the prices have dropped now. So maybe that could account for a little bit for, the um, difference in price, but uh, again, I'm just speculating. I have no knowledge about what they bought and how much it costs, but when they saw our, our prices, they were very surprised at the, okay. um, that they, it was more affordable than what they had paid, so. Not, not to worry, and as I said, I will coordinate a meeting at the, at the site, and I will make sure that uh, Theo is involved with you as well. All but right, we'll, thank we'll, you so we'll much. Meet down there, and thank you for, participating okay. and, and throwing your two cents in. We actually do appreciate it. <laughs> All right, thanks so much. Thank okay, you. Good, night. good night. All right, good night. good night. So should we move on a little bit? Yep. As I said, I know we all have as some, some time things going on. Um, I'm gonna skip anything else right now that I might've wanted to potentially bring up for other um, committee policies discussion or anything like that. Cause again, as I said, I know we're We've got a time element where we're working with. So if, if that's okay. So if we go to the prior two meeting minutes that Kevin sent out, and thank you so much for doing them, by the way. Um, we really do appreciate it. Um, I don't know if, I, well, obviously Kevin has looked at the minutes. I've never yeah, reviewed the them. I think they look fantastic. <laughs> I'll, I'll say they sounded fantastic. I don't know how they looked. <laughs> Um, I don't know if Ken or Nicole have any thoughts on the minutes yes, at all. I, I've reviewed them. They look okay. good. All right. Can I have a motion to accept one or both sets of minutes? Um, I motion to accept both minutes from 10, 15 and 11, 4, 2021. There's a motion to accept the minutes from 10, 15. Oh, I'm sorry. Seconded. I'm sorry. There's a, <laughs> there's a motion and seconded to accept the minutes uh, for the, the two sessions on the floor right now. 
Any discussion? Hearing none, Kevin? Aye. Nicole? Aye. Jonathan? Aye. Ayes have it. Thank you all very, very much. So the next thing is the KMA spreadsheet. And I know at the last meeting, uh, last couple of meetings, we had talked about the KMA spreadsheet and looking at some potential things that we might wanna consider working on more or dedicating more time and energy to on the spreadsheet. I don't know if anybody's really had a chance to do it or not. There's been a lot of other things going on. If not, um, and you wanna continue, I'm happy to you know, discuss or leave here and then keep it on our agenda for our next meeting. I haven't been able to review it, I'm sorry. Kev? Yeah, I, I didn't look at it either. Okay. Nor did I, um, I'm familiar with it, but nor did I. Okay. Um, I, yeah, I, mean, I'm, I know the KMA report back yep. and forth for anything outdoor and a lot of the indoor um, back and forth. I think as far, no, it's really gonna be a deciding factor on how yeah. we um, deal with the KMA report is gonna be really largely on how, what happens with the grant. Absolutely. Um, because if we get the grant, I mean, that knocks out such a huge chunk of the KMA report. So that we've already you know planned for. So it's, it's almost tough right now to forecast what we wanna work on next. I guess that, that might be something, Jonathan, that you and I need to work on is well, maybe isolating items that were not included in the grant so that we know like this is what we should be looking at. There are, and I agree with that. As far as the grant goes, I have reached out to MOD um, and I have not heard back yet in the past two days whether or not um, normally they would have had an answer by now, but this is a different year. And I know that they lost uh, the person who does all the compiling, literally the day that the grants were submitted, that person resigned. Um, and that may have held up the process, but I do have a, a call into MOD as well as a text into MOD um, asking not, they're not going to tell us ahead of time. I'm not sure if we're approved or not, but if they can give us a timeline to work with. So uh, stay tuned for that. If I get any answer at all, we'll all be the first to know. Um, <laughs> What I would say though, with regard to the KMA report, because it talked a lot about the town's website as well. There were things in there and that is gonna take quite a bit of work to really get it accessible, um, which I'll segue into something else really for this in a minute. But uh, Ken, maybe you can fill us in on this part of it. Has the town begun any conversation yet with the new contract for the website or for the, for the manager of the site? Not that I'm aware of, but I thought Brad had, maybe he, he mentioned it in the executive meeting, but uh, he's beginning to work on it. As you know, Brett was the one that set up the uh, current uh, website, but he mentioned something about it. I don't know okay. if it terminates at the end of this calendar year or the fiscal year, but it, it's coming up. So I know they have plans. And I think, I wanna say they've asked for a, a grant for that too, maybe to help them uh, with it. I know they, they've gotten a grant for security uh, for the website, but I'm not sure what else, uh, they've gotten anything else. All right, so if, if nobody has an objection, then I'm gonna reach out to Mike on that and see where, where that goes. Because I know in our grant, we, we requested $15,000 if, if the grant's approved and if that part of it is approved. But having said that, making the website fully accessible potentially could be significantly more, or we don't know if we wanna assure if nothing else that whoever has the contract is familiar with the process going forward and has, has history of doing this in the past in accessibility. Well, we've been um, over this with Mike and Brett. Um, yep. I don't think we're gonna, you're not gonna run into any problems with that. Everybody's, I think is on board. I think they are, but I wanna, I want us to be part of the process in the beginning because that's really almost one of the first things that we need to know mm -hmm. before they enter into negotiation with a, with a company or a vendor. And if they're not trained and if they haven't done it and don't have background significantly, and a lot don't, a lot will say they do but the vast majority don't. So once they have a contract and then they have to really do certain things, they're not familiar with the process and they don't have the staff on board. So it's, yes, you're right. It's on everybody's radar, but I think we need to, I can, I can put together a series, for example, of 10 or 15 questions, even if I'm not there or none of us are there, that they should ask each of the potential vendors so that they, they get the information that they need. Does anybody else have anything under under the old business part of it right now? No. Nope. Okay, um, I'll add also under old business when I didn't put this in, just to give everybody an update on the uh, middle school. The last thing that has to be ordered and put in and the bids went out this week 
are the railings for the accessible style railings with an upper and lower wrap bars all the way across. Um, most of the project, I'd say 80 to 85 percent of the project otherwise has been completed. There was a final work order for some more cement to smooth out some of the areas, not as part of the main entrance area, but some of the other areas that they've already grinded and laid some cement. They ran out of cement. So um, there was uh, an order that was approved to get more cement. The cement was in. I spoke to the contractor earlier today. He couldn't pour today because of the, the wet weather today, earlier today. Um, he's yeah. hoping to be able to pour tomorrow. So everything, if everything goes on plan, except for those final railings, this project should be done by Tuesday or Wednesday. Um, What's then, the lead time on the railings? Are they being fabricated by somebody or are they like pre-assembled? These will have to be fabricated. Okay. So um, that's why they're out to bid. So um, the cost that was submitted was just over $10,000, the original cost. So because of that, they actually have to, they should have put it out to bid in the first place and they didn't. Um, so hopefully they'll have an answer back on that. The last conversation I had was from uh, Damien earlier today that they were just waiting to get the bids back and hope to have them back by tomorrow. So, um, you know, the fabrication of these may take a week or two to get in, but the rest of the project hopefully will be done early next week. Um, and then Kevin and I were going to go out and take some pictures as well. So um, that'll, that'll be a big project that we can say we, we've been able to accomplish and we will be proud of, of having it done, I think, for the community. It's been a long time overdue. So, and I thank everybody who's not here and everybody who is here for any support that we've gotten to, to put it together and do it. So um, that's great. Um, Nicole, still under old business, if I can add, because this wasn't, if you can, or I can, we can put under new business, actually. I was going to ask for a pandemic under that. We'll go to new business, if that's okay with everybody. And if you could give us a pandemic update uh, with regard to town and anything you think of, we should be aware for consideration for people with disability. Um, you caught me off guard here. Um, <laughs> but um, not that I can think of. Um, I would encourage people um, that are eligible um, to get their booster um, just by the amount of um, cases that we're seeing of vaccinated people. Um, that's obviously going to give you that little edge. Um, but other than that, I cannot think of anything. I didn't know last night at the Board of Selectmen meeting, it was mentioned um, possibly purchasing some at-home kits so that if somebody were to contact you, Jonathan, that could not make it somewhere, mm -hmm. um, that you could give them that. Um, but that's that's all I have. Okay. Um, I'm glad I hear that. I think that's a great idea because every now and then I, I do get a call from a resident who is a shut-in and can't get somewhere for different reasons. And in some cases, um, I've gotten a couple of calls in the past and simply have been asked about home kits and directed them where to get them or where they can get them um, or offered to make arrangements to have them delivered in, in, in one case. So um, if the town is going to purchase them, is there anything you need from the COD? Uh, do you need a request or do you need us to support it? Or what would you say? Or just, or just, that was just a conversation that was very loosely mentioned. Um, I, um, Brett had a good point of the fact that they are, um, they can be fairly expensive. Um, as they're like a throwaway thing, you think that it's going to be this cheap thing you're going to buy, but they can range between $30 and $50. So that would be something that would go into play, as well as I was wondering if it would be um, a legal issue for us to be giving those out. So what if someone had a false negative or a false positive? Could it come back to us that we had issued them that test? Um, I may be overthinking it, but that's what I do. <laughs> well, overthinking sometimes isn't a bad thing, you know, and I will say, I know when uh, the president earlier this afternoon had a press conference, he talked about making home tests available to anybody who wanted them, quote, for free, unquote, or uh, some kind of an order for insurance carriers to have to pay for them as well. So I think like a lot of things with, with vaccinations and, and testing right now, it's something that's going to probably take a week or two or three to ferret out and see if they really are free or how there's gonna be done or maybe municipalities are gonna be given so many as a result of that. So this was just 
reported and announced this afternoon, so I don't even think there's any detail on it yet. But Jonathan, the answer to that question is nothing is ever free. <laughs> yes, thank when, you. Ken. One way or another, I think we can all agree with that. I, to I, I do totally agree with that. Yes, but if we're going to have to pay taxes, which we have to, we might as well pay it for something. No, like I, this. I, I think they're going to check into see if OPA funds are available, but they're not a, as a, that expensive. We've gotten ours at CVS. I think it's 23 or 24 dollars for two tests. We've got some online. We've ordered some online. We've got some, and I understand that uh, Walmart is even cheaper. I don't know, know that for a fact. So it really isn't that expensive. So I don't know how many the town would consider buying. I don't know the need. There's also a question of communication because not everybody is on Facebook. So how do they become aware of it? There may be some outreach. Jonathan may have to do some outreach for some people. Uh, but it was mentioned if uh, Jonathan would be able to assist in this. So I mentioned last night. So I think that's good. That was brought up. I think it, I'm not sure it was either Lenny or Brett that mentioned that, that how you've uh, helped people in the past. And uh, is that going to continue? So Nicole, if it's okay, since you're now the um, nurse in town and again, congratulations. Um, I, I can work with you on that if it's okay to see how we can coordinate um, with the board of health and the health agent and so forth. Um, yeah. and we can come up with protocol and policy on what COD can and can't do. You know, this may be something that we need to sit down with Todd as well as Mike and talk about, but at least if we have a procedure in place and notification process or how we're going to get things to people, if I do get calls, we'll have some, we'll have a protocol that we can follow. Yes. I think that sounds good. Okay. Um, future grant opportunities. I, I wanted to start putting together a list. I have a short list so far of potential future grant opportunities for other things in town that we might want to consider. But again, as you said earlier, Kevin, it kind of depends on what gets funded and what doesn't mm -hmm. in this particular grant. But we have other projects that we want to consider looking at as well, um, or other things that other committees in town are involved in that we may want to look at supporting with a grant of some sort. So um, I'm going to ask again if everybody could think about that for our next meeting. Can I give you and, one piece of information on grants? I'm sorry? Can I give you one piece of information on grants? Abs absolutely. I sat in on a, not a Zoom, that was an online meeting, not Zoom, um, with Brett and Mike this afternoon um, from uh, DCR mm -hmm. about their upcoming land and water grant. Um, so they usually run two rounds of grants a year. One is land and water. The second one is PARC, P-A-R-C. Um, mm -hmm. Both have to do with either land acquisition um, rehab in a park, building a new park, so on and so forth. And by park, I don't necessarily mean playgrounds, um, just op uh, open space. Um, one thing that was really nice to hear the, the, they had a question and answer section at the end. And a woman from another town had asked the question, what are your requirements for accessibility? Because they highlighted accessibility quite a bit. And the woman, um, Michelle, the representative from DCR, given the presentation said, if you send us a grant application that says, well, we're compliant because we put in one parking spot and there's one you know, section of walkway, she goes, we're probably going to overlook it. She goes, what we're looking for is for individuals and groups and towns that are going above and beyond to make their park lands as accessible as possible. So that was super, super encouraging. I know Mike and I have talked in the past about um, obviously not a playground, but just kind of revamping Tricentennial Park because it's a nice scenic area, but it's not accessible. There's not a whole lot going on there. Um, so that's something that we're going to start dis discussing. And when that happens, obviously, I'll tie it back into the committee with what we're what we're thinking. Um, but it was it was super, super encouraging to hear that information from the state that there's such a big emphasis on um going above and beyond for accessibility and not just meeting bare minimums. And I think that I, I, I had had a conversation, um, I think it was Tuesday, with someone from DCR about something else and the same similar type of subject came up. I wasn't involved in a, you know, a conference like the one you guys were in this afternoon that probably went into it in depth. But what was discussed and what came up was what kind of things would be potentially available or what kind of funds would be available or what can they be used for a little bit. And um, not myself, but one of the other participants in this, in this little group asked if there are areas where we already have a park 
or recreational areas that we want to revamp and reconstruct as opposed to using new lands that uh, a town has if we could do it. And the answer we got was absolutely yes, um, that they would really be encouraging taking older recreational or park areas and reconfiguring them, um, mm -hmm. not only to bring them up to other code, but to bring them up to ADA code and compliance code. Um, and that they would look long and hard at, at projects that, again, as you said, went above and beyond. So. Right. I think that's great. I think, thank you for, for being involved in that this afternoon. Seriously, um, you're doing a lot, of, a lot of really awesome stuff for the town. Thank you for the parks and stuff. So um, yeah, something to be considered and, and continued as we all go forward. Um, Jonathan, I'm gonna leave the meeting. I yeah, I'm gonna be leaving in about three minutes. I'm ending it. So, cause yeah, I know you have to get where you're going to, Ken. Thank you. Yep. Okay, good night, everybody. Thank, thank you, Ken. Do we have any public input available right now? Is there anybody out there who? No, it's haven't? just the three of us now. Okay. Um, I put the other new meetings updates up there since we've decided to go to once a month for the next four months up there. Um, the other thing just for the two of you, last but not least, is if there's anything the two of you can think that we can do to reach out and get new members, please let, let me know. Well, Jonathan, just tie back that back into quick. Of do we, uh, Nicole, I know you're not on Facebook anymore, but we started. Um, yep. We got to get permission a while back from the board of selectmen. We do have a COD Facebook page now. Um, I can see that I have my ways. Yeah, well, I'm sure. Yeah, I know you. Yeah. Um, if you ever come back, let me know because like we can grant permissions and stuff. So if you want to post things, you can. Or if there are things that you that you know as as the town nurse Nicole or anything else that you would like it to post to have out there, please let me or Kevin know. Kevin is much much more savvy and able to post easier and faster than I certainly am. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, if, I'm sure Kevin would be fine speaking for Kevin. I hope. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, if there's something oh, that you think yeah. like tie in and yeah, health health related in any way that ties into COD, let me know and I'll post it. Thank you, Kevin. Other than that, that's it for now, guys. Short and, well, relatively short and sweet. Um, I think we did a good job. We covered what we needed to cover. Does anybody have any last thoughts? Um, next meet, and I mean, we'll talk about when we, when we get closer to our next meeting, but uh, an, an agenda item just needs to be, we need to reorganize the commission just because we technically have vacancies and positions, so. Yeah, I know. Have that on your radar. It's on my radar. Um, it's definitely on my radar. Anything else? I think that is it. I will uh, I will make a motion to adjourn at 531. I'll we have it. a motion to adjourn, seconded by Nicole. All those in favor, Nicole? Aye. Kevin? Aye. Jonathan? Aye. Thank you guys very much for okay. participating and, and doing all the things that you do. I appreciate it. Have a good night. You too. Thank you. Nicole, I'll be in touch. Yes, thank you. Okay. All right. Bye-bye. Hey, Jonathan. Thanks. Yes, sir. Can you stay on for a minute? Yeah, I'll wait until you... I'm just kidding. I'll, uh, I'll talk to you later. <laughs> You're a funny man, Kevin. <laughs>